हेलो एवरी वन इन टू डेज क्लास विल बी स्टार्टिंग अबाउट फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ येस ऑफकोर्स वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज अ फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ एज यू ऑल नो दैट सेल इज कॉल्ड एज अ फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ राइट सो बिफोर गोइंग टू दिस टॉपिक लेट मी टेल यू हाउ द नेम सेल वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड बाई होम येस इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाई अ साइंटिस्ट रॉबर्ट हुक वेल ही वॉज अब्जॉर्ब इन दिन स्लाइस ऑफ अ कॉक ही फाउंड अ स्ट्रक्चर विच रेसेंबल द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ हनी कोम ओके एंड एज दिस वॉज लाइक द कंपार्टमेंट्स ही टर्म द कॉल्स cell cell which refers basically refers to a compartment okay from that date till now we are using the term cell uh, in the biology okay and then with the invention of the magnifying lens uh, it led to the discovery of the microscopic world like a scientist came la liven who found the living cells for the first time in the pond water and then a scientist named robert brown he found the nucleus for the first time okay now coming back to the point why cell is called as a fundamental unit of life right yes it's because all the living organisms right if you consider a unicellular organisms or if you consider multicellular organisms all living organisms are made up of cells consider a multicellular organisms right and the multicellular organisms are made up of organ system and organ system is something that is comprising of organs and then organs are made up of tissues and tissues in turn are made up of cells so basically these cells are responsible for carrying out all the functions which are necessary to keep up the body alive okay so this is the reason the cell is called as a fundamental unit of life right so the next topic is about shape and size of a cell yes okay so do you think all the cells in the living organisms will be having a same shape and the same size if your answer is yes then it is not correct and if your answer is no yes of course it is correct as true the shape and size of the cell depends upon its the function it performs okay suppose if you consider amoeba right amoeba it has what the irregular shape right and if you consider a muscle cell how it appears a soft muscle cell it appears something like this right and if you consider your rbc cells it will be like very small right like a oval uh, shaped cell and if you consider your neuron or a nerve cell how it appears it appears like a tree isn't it like something like this right so if you consider this you can see all the cells right on different cells will be having different shapes that depends on the function it performs okay so the next topic is division of labor in multicellular organisms there is something called division of labor which means uh, so if you consider a uh, organ system there are a uh, specific organs to carry out specific functions right for example uh, stomach uh, you have stomach to digest your food you have heart to pump the blood likewise in cell also the cell has got its specific components uh, to have or to carry out its particular functions and those components we call them as cell organelles okay and if you consider right these cell organelles make the basic unit of the cell okay now let us study about the structural organization of the cell every cell basically is made up of three components like one being the cell membrane or a cell wall cell wall comes into picture only if you consider plants okay and then you have a nucleus and cytoplasm yes now coming to the first a uh, structural organization which is nothing but a cell membrane or cell wall let me explain you about a cell wall first okay so coming to the cell wall cell wall is found only in plant cells and it is not found in animal cells okay so consider this as a plant cell okay and you can consider this outermost layer as a cell wall okay and this cell wall is made up of a very complex substance called as a cellulose okay this cellulose gives a rigidity and turgidity to the plant cell and this is the reason why the cell wall is present only in plant cells and it is not present in the animal cells okay so coming to the next point there is some phenomenon called as in plasmolysis with respect to the cell wall and i'll explain you about that 
okay plasmolysis is a phenomenon in which a living plant cell loses its water because of exosmosis through the cell wall and it gets shrinked off okay and the contents of the cell gets shrinked off and this condition we call it as plasmolysis okay so this is all about cell wall and now coming to the cell membrane okay yes so a cell membrane is the outermost layer of the animal cell okay and in animal cell cell wall will not come into picture okay so and this cell membrane has got its constituents which are made up of lipids and proteins okay you can even call it as lipoproteins which means the cell membrane or you can even call it as a plasma membrane which is made up of lipids and proteins okay and uh, there is one major difference between the cell wall and cell membrane uh, it is all about permeability okay so cell wall allows almost all particles to pass in and out of it but the cell membrane allows only certain particles to move in and out of it okay and that is the reason it is called as selectively permeable membrane or you can even call it as a semi permeable membrane uh, and okay so now uh, you might have a question that how do substances will move in and out of the cell there should be some phenomenon right and yes uh, that's because of two main phenomena one being diffusion and another being osmosis so coming to the definition of diffusion so diffusion means the movement of particles or the substances from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration okay so this happens when two substances come in direct contact with each other so now coming to the definition definition of osmosis osmosis is nothing but it's again the movement of particles or the substances from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration through semi permeable membrane okay so this is the only difference between the diffusion and osmosis okay okay let us understand the diffusion by considering one example okay uh, so consider uh, the co2 substances like co2 which is a cellular waste and has to be um, excreted out of the cell so uh, what happens because of the cellular activities co2 keeps on accumulating inside the cell now the co2 concentration is more inside the cell uh, with respect to its outer environment so what happens co2 diffuses out of the cell okay uh, so the same thing in our lungs the gaseous exchange will also happen because of the diffusion okay and yes So now coming to the osmosis, I already told you about the definition of osmosis, right? So with respect to osmosis, there is something called tonicity. So tonicity basically is a relative concentration gradient which decides the extent and direction of the diffusion, okay? So based on this, we have three types of solutions, one being hypotonic solution, The second being isotonic solution and third being hypertonic solution. okay so these all are defined with respect to solute concentration okay so as you all know that what happens when solute plus solvent combines it forms a solution right so now we also can define with respect to the solute concentration is what I told. So if the concentration of solute is less in the solution, it is called as hypotonic solution. And if the concentration of solute and solvent uh, will be almost same, then you can call it as a isotonic. And if the concentration of solute will be more uh, in the solution, then you can consider it as a hypertonic solution. Okay. So now let us discuss what happens to the materials or the cells when you keep in these type of solutions okay let me explain you with the help of a diagram let us take three beakers okay so one first being hypotonic solution the second one is isotonic and the third being hypotonic solution okay so consider you are placing a cell or any plant or animal cell or even a seeds 
okay uh, inside this solutions so what happens here as i told you before hypo means hypotonic means the solute concentration is less in this okay and here it means iso always refers to same it is almost same and in hyper which means the solute concentration is more in this so all these things are defined with respect to its outer environment okay so now consider when you are keeping a cell inside it what happens to this cell as i told you before osmosis always refers to the movement of water molecules uh, from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration right so here uh, being solute concentration less which also indicates you that solvent concentration is more right so if the solvent concentration is more outside the cell what happens the particles will move from the beaker to the cell right so this movement of particles from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration is what we call it as endosmosis okay so now if you consider the second type of solution which is nothing but isotonic solutions so what is happening here uh, i already told you that it is almost having the same concentration right so here you uh, you cannot expect any sort of moment so the net moment will be zero here because the concentration uh inside the cell and out of outside the cell is almost same so the ne net moment would be zero so the cell remains in the same state as how it is kept but if you consider hypotonic solution what happens to the cell as the water is moving from the beaker to the cell it gets uh swollen up okay and third uh, solution is a hypotonic solutions let us see what happens to the cell which has kept in this solution okay so uh, the name itself is indicating hyper which means solute is more which also indicates lesser uh, concentration of solvent correct so uh, as it is having lesser concentration of solvent water will move from cell to the beaker right from the cell as uh, the cytoplasm will also be having the water molecules in it what happens there creates a concentration gradient in it and thus the water molecules from the cell will flow to the beaker okay so this process we call it as a ex osmosis okay so where the water molecules are moving from the cell to the beaker which means they are moving out of the cell okay so what happens as a result of this the cells get shrinked off okay so this is what happens when you place a cell in three different types of solution so with this i can conclude that osmosis is also a special case of diffusion right where it happens through a semi permeable membrane okay uh, yes so let's uh, wind up the video now in the next class we shall be studying about uh, different types of cell organelles their structure and function hope you like this video thanks for watching okay if you find this video useful please like and share the video also please don't forget to subscribe our channel thanks for watching